Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you if table is empty then do the full load otherwise do the incremental load in SSIS. So recently I got an email from one of my subscriber that he asked like for example if data is not available in the destination table then it goes for the initial load otherwise incremental load. So he shown a screenshot like first we have an execute SQL task and after that there are two data flow tasks. One data flow task is for the initial load and another data flow task is for the incremental load. Okay. So let's see how we can implement this functionality in the SSIS that if there is already some data then it should go for the incremental load otherwise for the initial load. So let's jump to the demo. I have created a basic SSIS package here that I have an execute SQL task here and then I have full load here. So in the full load it will load the data from a flat file to a SQL server table. So the SQL server table name is email and it will load the data from the emails.csv file which contains 1000 records in this particular source file. Okay. So this is for the full load and for the incremental load what we are doing we are loading the data from the same table but we are using a lookup transformation and then we are checking that with the email table as a reference table we are doing a join on the ID column and if record already exist then it should go into the email underscore updated table okay and then if data doesn't exist means if the data is new then it should go into the email table so this is kind of code that I already written and then in the update data execute SQL task we can write the code to update data from email underscore updated to the email table okay so I can show you the number of records in the table so the table is situated inside my SQL Server 2019 instance on the test database. So if I show you the data in the email table, so right now there is no data. Okay, so it should import the data ideally into the full load. But now because there is no code written on the precedence constants, so that's why if I will execute the package, then it will import the data to both the data flow task. Yeah, so you can see that it ran both the data flow task and everything got ran. So now it might have inserted data from both of the data flow tasks. So let me check the counts now. So it has inserted 1000 records. Okay. So it seems like this got ran first and because this was ran first, so it found everything in the destination. So that's why it has inserted 1000 records. Okay. Now even if I will rerun the package again, then it will start running both the tasks. Okay. So what I can do, I can just truncate this table for now. So the table is empty. And now what we can do is actually in the first task we can get the count of the destination table. So for the destination table I can write a query here select count star from email and it will give me the count. So I can copy the query from here and I can rename this task as get count from desk table. Okay and then I can just simply paste the query here. Alright click OK. okay. Now we need to define an SSIS variable and maybe I can call the variable as total records okay and the data type will be in 32 so that's fine now what we will do we will assign the this particular count from this table into the variable that we defined so from the result set we will select single row and then we go to the result set and the result set name will be 0 and the variable name will be the total records it's selected automatically because this is the only variable in the SSIS package so we can click on OK. Now we got the count in this particular variable total records. So now what we can do we can just right click on the precedence constants click edit. From the evaluation operation we will select expression and constants and here for the full load the count should be 0. Okay. So what we can do we can just drag and drop the SSIS variable into the expression and we can write a condition double equal to 0. So if the total records are 0 then this particular full load will be executed okay and same thing we can do for the incremental load as well that we can select expression and constants we can just drag and drop the total records here now we will write a different condition if total records is not equal to zero okay so if it is not zero then it will go for the incremental load we can click on okay so this is how it will work now because right now the destination table is empty then it should go for the full load. So let me start running the package now. So you can see that because the desk table was empty so that's why it went for the full load. 
and it should have inserted the data into the destination table yeah so that's fine now let me check the counts again so now we have 1000 records now if i will rerun the ssis package then it will go for the incremental load so let me start running the package again so now you can see that it went for the incremental load because the data is already there so that's why the count of the this SSIS variable total records went to 1000 and because this is not zero so that's why it went into this particular location and if there will be data then it will always go to the incremental load and if you will truncate the table will delete everything from the destination table then it will go to the full load so I think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel Press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.